Trust me, you're gonna need this for the rest of your career. And it seems like I need to fix my hair. Hmm. I'm gonna see you soon. What up? This is Wang. By the way, that's W A N G. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to take advantage of sunlight in your architectural design. Why do you even want to use this in the first place? Well, this might help. According to the International Energy Agency, about 20% of the power is used up by lighting per year, and this part of the energy equals the total amount of nuclear power generates per year. And within this 20%, some of which is used during the daytime. In real life, we have to know that we can't store solar energy directly, no matter we're using solar thermal system or solar PV system. Oh, and that's the photovoltaic system. And what we do is converting solar energy to the electricity first. And then whenever we want to illuminate something, we use this powerful lighting. It is kind of like redundant, especially during the daytime. Instead, I think we can save up this part of energy to explore something else. The universe, for example. We gotta know that mankind's journal lies beyond stars. Here are some reasons we should take advantage of sunlight, including but not limited to the easiest and the most accessible resource, the cleanest resource, the most abundant renewable energy source. While well, all mentioned above are from an energy point of view, just wait a second. Cold coffee actually tastes better, trust me. So, within the perspective of architectural design, here are the real reasons why we should take advantage of sunlight. Reduce the cost of energy consumption. Most of our design nowadays is about sustainability and conservation of energy. Proper use of natural light can reduce the cost of energy consumption all the way up to 40%. Sunlight could be used for temporary control in the room, air conditioning, and replacing or reducing the requirement to large extents. Enhance the quality of spaces. Proper introduction of sunlight into buildings increases the value of spaces. The spaces look larger and more alive. Proper control of sunlight can also enhance the quality of interior decorations. Prevents growth of fungi. The room without proper sunlight will lead to the growth of fungi, moles, and insects. All of this will cause the room to be uncomfortable, gloomy, and bad smell. Improve physical health. Sunlight has a lot of biological importances. For example, it triggers production of vitamin D on our body, cure rickets, reduce strain on eyes, reduction of dental problems, bilirubin degradations, breaking down of carbs, protein, and fat. The development of white blood cell improves the activity of nervous system, regulates the blood pressure. Improve mental health. Sunlight has a lot of psychological importances as well. Improve mood, enhances morale, increases energy levels, lower the rates of stress-related illness, prevents SAD, and better sleep. And here's a list, take a screenshot if you want. So before we take another step, it is quite important to know about life first. And here I'm gonna buy about the two most crucial features. So when I add it out here, I realize there's no such a phrase called Bible up. Uh, I don't really speak this language, so it just happens. What I was trying to convey is uh, important and list up. Anyway, so let's continue. Two most crucial features. One, light travels in a straight line, and two, the wave particle duality of light. We gotta know that once light has been produced, it will keep traveling in a straight line until it hits something. This brings us to the first part of today's episode, when sunlight hits the building envelope. 
When live casting, we will have it either hit the building envelope directly or indirectly, both of which will hit the top of the envelope and the side of the envelope. To introduce live from top, we can do skylight, solar bottle light, clear story, sawtooth roof, light pipe. To bring live from side, we can do window, light shelf, louver system. And this is our starting point. Let's say we got a room and there's nothing in the building envelope. And the black thing over here is the rendering of the room. Skylight is the most efficient way of delivering light. The specific type of this one is called a straight skylight, and this is called a splay skylight. Take a quick comparison, and you will notice the differences. By the way, the Phoenix Public Library can be an example of skylight. Architects punch a lot of holes on its roof, uh, which is quite interesting, I guess. Solar bottle light can be found in underdeveloped places. So you cut the bottle in half, uh, or you don't really have to. You fill the bottle with water, and then you fix it to the ceiling. And that's what you're gonna get. I'm gonna boost up the exposure to see it better. Uh, just for a quick reference, all the renderings in today's episode share the same rendering settings. Clear story refers to vertical high place windows or a combination of windows above eye level. This is a roof monitor and FYI, the roof monitor is a double clear story. What you see right now is a normal clear story and you can tell one side of a roof. Or you can push a clear story all the way to the boundary. Or even punch some holes in the other side of the room. Clear story is probably one of the most common ways to bring in light to the interior today. And here's an example, Curvy House Northcote designed by Ben Calorie Architects. The building is an extension house and the site is surrounded by the neighborhood. So it was really hard to get light into the building to bring in direct light from north side. Oh yeah, why north? Well, the project is located in Australia, the other side of the planet. So they designed a curved clear solar roof to maximize the amount of light interior, especially during the winter. Sawtooth roof. The main feature for this type is 1. Collecting diffuse light and 2. Evenly lighting up the space. And this can be found in old factories. Light pipe. This can be found in areas that are short of sunlight. What these pipes do is conveying daylight from one end to the other. Notice that in this category, there are passive ones and active ones as well. Window, a conventional one which illuminates the nearby areas. Light shelf. The intention for this type is lighting up the back of the room. The shelf here functions as a reflector to redirect the light. However, this has something to do with the material of the shelf, and the actual effects are really minimal. Another thing to point out is the light shelf itself will block some of the sunlight, which reduces the total amount of light inside. And these are probably the main reasons we're not really using it nowadays. Louver system. The main idea of using a louver system is to do the light control, no matter dynamic or steel, horizontal or vertical, and these are simple applications of the louver system.
So it is pretty late already, and I'm gonna see you in the next episode, uh, which is the fluctuation part of the light and how to use that in your design. And so I did a little time management last night. Well, not this one, this one. And then I realized the length of the video is not enough. So I set up some quizzes for you guys to kind of like consolidate the basics. First one, which of the following roof lighting method can provide uniform light? A. Skylight B. Clear Starry C. Active Light Pipe and D. Sawtooth Roof Just take a pause here and I'll see you in a bit. And the answer for this one is D, the sawtooth roof. So let's go with the other one. The question number two, which of the lighting methods is the most efficient way to bring in light? A, soda pop bottle solar light. B, skylight. C, roof monitor. D, light shelf. You guys ready? The answer for this one is B, the skylight. And next one, question three. What's the benefit of using clear stories? It's gonna be a multi-answer question, so still take your time. A, more natural lighting without clear. B, improving air ventilations. C, better privacy. D, constant indoor temperatures. So, and the answer for this one is A, B, and C. So. Clear stories usually have larger window size than a conventional one, which will allow like building to gain due. Which allows building to gain heat fast. So this might cause a heat gain and heat loss problems. And by the way, this is a part of the particle feature of the light. Question number four is an open question. And the question is, what is my name and how to spell my name? The answer for this one is quite obvious. So my name is Wang and spelled as W-A-N-G, which is quite easy and simple, right? Next one, question number five. It is an open question again. If I want to deliver natural light to the underground level, what should I do? There's no right or wrong answer for this one. However, it still like reveals a little bit of the fluctuation part of the light. That's probably all of it. Oh yeah, you guys still remember the time management? Let's check it out. It is pretty cool, right? Before you leave, I just want you guys to know there's also a Chinese version of this episode. If you want to learn some Mandarin, uh, probably just go check it out. And a quick note that I don't really speak English, so if there are some errors in the video, well, it just happens. Probably just let me know, leave comments below, and appreciate it. And come and see me next time.